are is to protect employers. It's not to protect the interests of workers. But uh, I'm going I'm to move on, Kip, but great to talk to you, man. Thank you, sir. Bye bye. Yeah, take care. All right. Uh, Stephen James, uh, jump on the show if you can. About upward mobility in America, but he doesn't cite either one. And I don't think he's lying about them. I just think he's immune to the hard work of sighting okay, them. Okay, yeah, hung, get... hung low, so what's going on, Let's get on, a man. little bit big picture here. I don't want to harp oh, on. Oh, Luke, there's panic on the streets of London, panic on the streets of Birmingham. I wonder to myself, uh, could life ever be sane again, Luke? Uh, yes, it, life can be sane again. <laughs> Uh, I don't think uh, 10 years from now we'll be talking a great deal about these riots, but what do you think of their mm. significance? Like uh, my, my supposition without knowing much about what's going on mm. is that anyone with anything to lose is not participating in these riots, that only marginalized mm. losers are participating in these riots. I find it hard to imagine that CEOs, that uh, men with children and, and spouses that they want to protect with mortgages are out there participating mm. in the riots. I don't think uh, PhDs are participating in the riots. I don't think people earning a million pounds a year are participating in the riots. I don't think uh, people who've built up a good life are participating in the riots. My supposition is that these are overwhelmingly losers participating in self-destructive behavior. Well, you, your assessment is probably correct. Uh, but look, it is an inflection point that's happened here in the UK. And there is something significant about this that's happened that, um, I mean, look, I'm tempted to go down your analysis. I'm tempted to go along with like Colin Liddell's analysis that these things are like fizzle out and stuff like that. But these things, the situation really has been building incrementally in the UK for about now, say five years since this country struggled with the problem of stopping these young men who are traveling here on boats, arriving on the shores of the country. And it started in the tens of thousands, and now it's in the hundreds of thousands per year. And because they can't all go to one place, they're being bussed into um, local areas all across the country. And around a couple of years ago, uh, the problem of the fact that local hotels were being filled with these people began to become become known amongst amongst the chattering classes amongst the normal people um and now there's it it's spoken about on normy facebook it's spoken about with amongst boomers everybody's aware um, and each local area ha has its own issues and so this has been a problem that's been simmering along and <clears throat> then you have people who are instigators who are um, of, of this kind of sentiment like your Tommy Robinson type who take advantage of these issues and of uh, say certainly this summer been calling for his his uh, instigators to go down to London on marches and then one week ago, it's last Monday, there was uh, a sort of mass stabbing event of children uh, in, a, in a local area north of Liverpool uh, by the son, the young son of immigrants. Um, and it couldn't be starker. Uh, I mean, this was a, a black Rwandan young male who's just butchered 11 children girls and a dance class a taylor themed a, a taylor swift themed dance class three dead under 10 years old each couldn't be starker and uh like by friday by friday uh i believe groups organically or of probably like your like your assessment is correct people who haven't got anything else better to do or anything else to lose are going out and uh, kicking off but it did start in my opinion i mean it could be wrong about this organically in the local area where it happened there was a vigil going on where it happened and um it's full of scousers full of liverpool people they they have a lot of irish uh, heritage the liverpoolians they're quick quick to anger quick to fire fire back they have a history of not getting along with the police a history of poverty things kicked off in the local area the police came in 
history of hating the police uh, and bricks started to be thrown at the police and then uh, Saturday protests uh, developed in other places around around the country and today they're continuing so that's where we stand and uh, what what are the potential outcomes do you see any potential possibilities resulting from these riots so the potential outcomes certain well certain certainly the ones that i can be certain about are crackdowns on people who are um against <laughs> willing to speak out against illegal immigration and that in in the first instance the prime minister we have to also be aware we have a new prime minister new labor government only four weeks old um who's look who's looked incredibly weak by the way he's he didn't show his face yesterday i know you've spoken about in the past how, how joe biden's appeared weak the prime minister of the uk didn't even release a statement yesterday whilst there were um, riots uh, around the country and i know it's easy to dismiss these things but it is quite it's unprecedented in my lifetime uh, at least uh, me me hearing about this happening he's come out now and of course he's doubling down on that these are illegal riots we're going to throw the book at these people there's no question about it but the issue is luke he's in a way he's thrown some gasoline on the fire uh, because these people already were angry they were already fighting on the streets they were already uh, smashing things up um these people aren't the type of people who kind of listen to reason. Um, and uh, he, he, he had no conciliatory. There was, n there was no sense of whatsoever of that. There is no tone. There is no conciliatory tone from the government or prime minister as yet. Um, and it stands in co complete contrast to when the, the Black Lives Matter riots started, for instance. There, there is this hashtag trending now called two tier care two tier care starmer because there is this widely held belief within the united kingdom that if you're an ethnic minority you are treated one way which is the police will let you off the police will look the other way uh you'll get away with a lot of stuff you'll get uh, away with crimes even uh, but if you're a white english person who generally follows the law then uh, you'll be uh, immediately arrested and have the book thrown at you and so there's this widely held belief that there is a two tier policing system here in the UK and uh, like the actions, the response uh, from the prime minister and the government so far has only been to heap fuel like upon that fire. Uh, because at the same time, there are Muslim gangs forming in uh, areas in the UK doing Muslim patrols. I mean, if you look at, An I think, Andy NGO on Twitter has I've been covering some of this. There's Muslim gangs who formed in, in the UK and there's evid evidence or, the, the, or there's video evidence of the police like speaking to them in a softly way and telling them, telling them on camera, look, discard your weapons in the mosque and we're here to protect you. But discard your weapons in the mosque so that uh, you don't get caught with them. Um, and the prime minister's coming out and just only naming the anti-migrant protests, the uh, he's calling everybody far right, that they're Nazis. So we're at an inflection point, basically, Luke. Right. And I, with, without really knowing much yeah. about these riots, I, I see that the only possible outcome is increased government repression of speech and more stigmatization of these right wing groups and there will be a systematic, uh, high-tech, uh, effective uh, lynching mm. of the people who participated in these riots, that they'll have their yeah. lives ruined, and consequently people will respond to incentives and be less likely to to join such movements. So I, I, the only outcome that I can, I can fathom is the government crushes this movement. Mm. So yeah. when you say an inflection yeah, yeah. point, I <clears throat> think you seem to be implying that there are other possibilities than what i just outlined so well i mean the black lives matter thing would anybody have expected that the government would acquiesce 
to look I, by the, I know you must think like I'm I'm fancifully I'm I'm fanciful in thinking that there is any other possible outcome than absolute oppression repression of these protests and you're right that that is the response of the government that is where they're going they've doubled down on it just a couple of hours ago but Luke the pro the protests haven't stopped yet okay that in fact they've inflamed even more so since the Prime Minister came out a few hours ago I've been speaking to uh, somebody who's been out onto the ground in one of the areas he says that these lads who are uh, like operating on the streets they they're largely zoomers they have their faces covered they are actually organized in a way that you wouldn't expect they are really they are <laughs> they are up for it they're angry and they don't care um and here's here's what's likely to happen is if the police can't get a hold of it then the army might have to come out onto the streets and that would be unparalleled that would be unprecedented and because we are, we're only four weeks into a Labour government um, politically this could be destabilizing for the government I mean it's like for four weeks into a, into a government for um, to end up having to call the army out on the streets because you're unable to like get a hold of this uh quickly could be politically destabilizing i'm not sure but all i'm trying to say is that we are at a point here in the uk where there are communities who are poverty stricken they are being filled with migrants there is this phenomenon that is a real real phenomenon of hotels who are housing largely african men who in on mass in hotels within communities and it, these are the areas that are be, becoming the flashpoints like there's one in rotherham uh, a large holiday inn hotel effectively today was surrounded uh, and sieged by hundreds of people and outside there there were um, as well as thugs and gangs of course doing most of the stuff there were lots and lots of local people who really have had enough so yes there will be a, a backlash now the police will get lots of these people but part of the deal is here in the UK that the laws aren't actually very tough so it's not like all these people will go to prison immediately they're probably used to this kind of in and out of the police station business and I predict that this this will continue actually for I know a few weekends at least this is what I'm expecting so if this were a Muslim or a, a black uprising you'd have hmm. a large number of articles in the news media talking about the the oppression that uh, these people have suffered hmm. and that's what's uh, uh, given rise to, to this rioting how much sympathy mm -hmm. is shown for the rioters in the mainstream media in the UK? Zero, of course. And, it, and I mean, no, nobody here in the UK, of course, wants riots. Nobody. And, and I get your point. Your point is that, like, but, but also, I'm not explaining myself here. I'm trying to say, I get your point that the media really is important, but also part of what you say is that you think that the media actually controls people's like deeply held beliefs only 0.1 percent or something or less than that so you have to understand that there really is deeply held discontentment in these communities where these migrant centers have been held i mean this isn't the only inflection point that we've had but it's the only one that's really kind of t have turned to violence in multiple areas um like in, the, in a flash pan due to an incident and so it's hard to predict where this is going, where this is going, but you're right. There is zero sympathy in the media for them. These people are portrayed as thugs. The average person on the street doesn't agree with it, but they also know deep down in their belly why it's going, why, why it's happened, which is different, why it's happened. And, and yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what, what else to say, to be honest, Luke. It's hard. Well, 
you, you know of Enoch Powell and his Rivers of Blood speech, and, and yeah, in yeah. reaction to that, he had the overwhelming sympathy of the British people, and he had almost complete opposition from the elites, and the elites absolutely crushed him and the, the nascent movement mm. that uh, grew up around him. So what would you say are the chances that this leads to the fall of the government? Oh, slim, five, five or 10%. Well, five that, or 10%, that's significant. But... I mean, that if, if it's even <clears throat> 1%, no. that's significant. I just, think, I just think we could be seeing that they might really have mishandled the situation. Um, this narrative that there is two-tier policing is actually a correct one in many ways. So if they can't get a, whole, get a handle on this quickly, then it will get out, it will get out of control. So if the army has to be brought onto the streets, then, I mean, <laughs> I mean, what, but it's hard it's hard for me to give you an assessment but th this is what i'm saying i see colin liddell in the chat as well he also obviously thinks it's kind of insignificant um and i feel without being able to express it clearly that i i feel like there is something different about this and i don't doubt like it's, that it will be repressed by the government that 90% chance, 95% chance, is that they will get a handle on it, they will lock these people up, and they will fizzle out. But the UK is always one or two incidents now away from these kinds of flaring up uh, incidents. And what happens in <coughs> a month's time you know, when there's another Manchester Arena bombing of children or, God forbid, uh, or, so, or something like that, or, again, children being slaughtered by another African migrant. I mean, you're, you either believe that the British people will take it forever and that there will be no consequences to this, or that at some point, like some eggs are going to get broken in a very messy way. Like it's not what anybody wants. Nobody actually wants this who is like law abiding, who is upstanding, who like just, you know, wants their normal life, but would like a few, you know, a, a little less illegal immigration, please. This isn't what anybody wants. Nobody wants the police to get bricked. But you're kind of also aware that when, when, when like an, uh, a revolt against it happens, it is the it is the people who have nothing to lose who kind of uh, stand up against it, who do um, lead the charges on the streets, who 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 are the crazy ones. And, and, and when it happens, it's not how you wanted it to happen. It's a messy process. And like I say, a lot of eggs get broken in the process. I'm thinking of so many analogies to this, uh, but, but one philosophical principle is that which cannot continue will not continue, and what cannot continue are the astronomical rates of immigration into the United Kingdom. That cannot continue whether you've got a left-wing government or a purportedly right-wing government. The, the amount of immigration that the United Kingdom has absorbed over the past 27 years is unsustainable, and everyone's going to respond to incentives, and, and this has got to feel like a punch in the face for the British government. And even if they don't agree with the rioters, they are in, inevitably are going to take away some lessons that they don't want to get punched in the face like this again. And this may well have a, an immigration restrictionist outcome. Yeah. So, <clears throat> I mean, and of course, that would be that would be the smart political play to make whilst not to tolerate, not to uh, excuse any of the criminal violence, okay, which nobody in Britain yeah. wants. Nobody here wants police, you know, the police attacked. You know, they don't even want mosques to be, you know, slightly damaged in, in the process. Nobody actually wants any of this. They just want a political resolution to, like, even 
just illegal immigration. I mean, the Overton window doesn't even have to stretch to mass, mass legal migration. Just the illegal stuff, which is out of hand. I mean, it's easy for people in this, like in the dissident right, to say, ah, the illegal immigration doesn't matter. It's, this is like a red herring, and the legal migration is what matters. They're right about that. But here in the UK, on this small island of like 70 million people, right, 100,000 illegal immigrants from the continent of Africa who are amongst the worst people being bussed into local communities everywhere around the country really is having a stark, shocking impact. And, I mean, it is only a matter... It is only a matter of time before, I think, they have to get a grip on this. And so, look, there was, there was a police commissioner today, Luke. I think it's, she's the, one of the highest ranking in the UK who released is a statement. Is she a uh, lesbian? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But she did release a statement today where she acknowledged that there are issues that have like to be politically addressed and she took that statement down within hours okay um her name is donna jones she's the chair of the association of police and crime commissioners uh, for hampshire uh, which is uh, down in london and the isle of wight um and she acknowledged like the issue um and basically said that the government needs to address like, the, the, the sentiment of the people who are, even though that the writing is bad, you know, nobody, nobody agrees with it. The government has to address the real concerns of the people on the streets that are behind it. But the prime minister has come out today and declared again, he's doubled down, that it doesn't matter why people are out there doing it. Um... Obviously, that you know, these people are just criminals, and it's got to stop. So, now, if the, if these rioters get increasing elite mm. support, all right, this woman is part of the elite. Mm. I just looked her up. She does have a substantial position, and that she was brave enough yep. to say this publicly. At a certain point, a dam will burst because what these rioters are furious about has reality. It's not just some fictional construct. And so yeah. at a certain point, the dam will burst and there will be more and more expressions such as what Donna Jones made by elites. Yes, yes, uh, exactly. Um, and by the way, just so that you can see that, I, that I'm right, I sent you on DM the tweet that she, she put out. So it's not a fake or anything. She put this tweet out um, and, I mean, I can... Uh, also, it, yeah, I, I found articles. Anyone can just Google yeah. Donna Jones yeah, yeah. commissioner and they'll find what we're talking about. It's easy to see. Mm. And I would suspect that so. a large number of the elite do feel the same way, but they're not willing to suffer the consequences of publicly expressing what, what they see. But at a certain point, the, the pressures to be civil are going to be overwhelmed by the pressure to tell the truth. And, mm. and it is possible yes. at, at a certain level of intensity you'll have more and more of the elite come forward with similar expressions to what she put out there. Yeah, so <clears throat> if the government don't do something to curb the problem and these riots continue, I mean, I don't see where else this is going. I don't see where else this is going except being politically destabilizing. So we'll have to, we'll have to see. We'll have to see see what happens. Um, yeah, and I don't really have much else to say about it. Yeah, what what are the odds that uh, these rioters are more intense about what they're doing than their football allegiances? What do you mean by that? Well, Colin Liddell is making the argument in the chat that once uh, football season starts, mm. that they'll have other concerns. I I know for. For many, to correct me if I'm wrong, but for many British men, their number one allegiance is to a particular football club 
not to uh -huh. any brand of politics or even uh, nationalism. Yeah, look, I mean, I'm tempted as well to be just as cynical as Colin is about this entire thing. I really am. Just uh, and well, you know, it's not a bad bet to make. Ninety percent chance this will fizzle out. The government will get control. All I'm saying is there's there's something in the air here that feels different, that really does feel different. And the way that we've seen Muslim gangs come out onto the streets, you know, certainly yesterday and today, I think it's also been happening, versus white people, uh, these are real race riots that, that have that have kicked off white versus ethnic minority and this is something that's hard to put back into the box once it's out there now if you believe like that the, the football hooligans just like a fight they like five pints in a fight well now they've tasted like the blood uh in some in some cases literally uh, and also metaphorically of a different kind of a fight there were scenes in uh, Belfast yesterday, Luke, of Irish Republicans joining arms with Ulster Unionists and marching against illegal immigration in, in Northern Ireland, which is unheard of. That's never happened before. That this is, you know, Everybody's absolutely shocked that this, you know, it's even a thing, even a possibility. So it feels different. That, that's, all, that's all I can say. It, it feels different this time. Yeah, I, I, I believe you. That there, that there does seem to be something different uh, about this. And it's the first mm -hmm. time that I can recall in, in recent years where the white population has reacted with such intense rioting. I, I can't mm -hmm. think of anything else similar to this in the first world. Yeah, and I have been watching lots of, of, of these live streams. It's, now there's what's different as well, because we're in the modern age, <clears throat> is whenever these things kick off, there's somebody with, there with a the phone live streaming it on YouTube. So I have been looking at many of these, watching them, and they are, the violence is being done by, a, by small, but not, not super small, a sizable majority in each area, but a small minority. And then following those people on like the periphery are what I would say are like 10 times, 15 times, 20 times that number of normal people, boomers, women, even, you know, women and children. And so it, it's as if, it's as if, you know, they're just like watching the vi the violence and the disorder go on, but it's as if like there is a greater cause that they're there for, and yes, some people are breaking some eggs and everybody, nobody wants it and they're all looking on aghast at it, but they're also there in support of like the, the greater premise for why they were out there in the first place, if I'm making any sense at all. Yeah. I don't know if you pay it. Yes, you, you make very good sense. Mm. Uh, there's an interesting tweet here. BBC cuts off former detective chief superintendent of the Met when he starts dropping truth bombs. So I don't know if you pay much attention to how the BBC is covering this. Well, I haven't looked at the BBC today. Obviously, uh, I mean, the media is just absolutely in full condemnation mode so you're not going to see anything on the mainstream media about this colin liddell asks sjj why, why there are no riots in the south uh well i mean the cynical uh i think the cynical uh take on this that i've seen colin give and i love colin so you know we can disagree now and again and he'll end up probably being right in the outcome so it's all good and fair the cynical take is <clears throat> um, well look my take 
is that the, the northern areas are deprived, okay? The northern areas are like the labour heartlands that have suffered poverty and, de and, and deprivation and are the traditional white working class areas that have, like mine, I live personally in one of the most deprived areas in the United Kingdom. So I live in a former mining town here on the outskirts of a city in the UK and it's in, I think, like the, something like the uh, bottom 5% or, or 5 to 10% of the, one of the most deprived areas. 10 years ago in the area, I hadn't seen, and this is going to sound crazy, I hadn't even seen a black man, okay? Who, who like lived here, obviously, maybe passing through or something, a delivery driver I'd, I'd maybe seen. But as in living here, I hadn't even seen it. Now, uh, there are gangs of young African men who roam the streets. If I want to go to the bus station, I have to go through gangs of them, like 20 deep, smoking ganja, outside the bus station, outside the train station. The town has been transformed massively. And on top of that, all the hotels in the local area um, are essentially full of these people. And there are cases and cases of like women being harassed, of incidents with children. And so just knowing this on a local level, that this is like a simmering problem, that everyone that you speak to speaks about it. The boomers are aware of it. The, the, the norm is that you wouldn't think about, speak about it on Facebook. Um, knowing this firsthand in my local area, I can imagine that this is the case in lots of the other similarly deprived areas that they've gone through rapid racial and therefore cultural transformation in, in like the last particularly five years. It's particularly stark since COVID for whatever reason. Um, and so that's my take on why why it's why it's not in the south. It's it's mainly in the north. These are, these are in the really deprived areas, um, and, and it, yeah, people have had enough, and they've got no money, so they might as well riot. Here's another analogy. Mm. I don't know what your life experience is like, but when I have hurt somebody unnecessarily, and they react with anger, they rarely react in the, the most rational way. They, they're just filled with rage and it just pours out of them it, they don't yeah. present a you know a, a rational usually irrational case and when people are angry they tend not to react in the most uh, measured and, and rational terms and so this is one way that i understand these these writers they just a, a switch has flipped in their head and just because they're not yeah. presenting a 15 point a rationally argued thesis does not mean that the concerns that they're addressing are not real. No, they're normal people. Uh, I mean, on local levels that aren't reported, there have been incidents like at these asylum centres, at these hotels, uh, in each, probably in each of the local area. Again, I know in my local area that there have been like police incidents at these hotels. Like there's been girls raped outside and therefore, what's happened, you know, in the local areas, uh, it's known that it's a migrant that's done it. And therefore, locals have turned out in response to these areas. Police have turned up and they've turned into like gatherings. And then they've been quiet. They, somehow, control has been gotten over. It hasn't gone much further. I'm speaking about my local area. I know that this has happened for a fact a number of times here, just in my local town. So... These aren't what you what we're seeing on the wider level. I can see how they've played out this weekend. If I'm aware of incidents like that that have happened, now on the back of it, what will have happened is in, in the areas where these incidents have happened probably multiple times and they have the largest collection of some of the worst type of these offenders, so, like perhaps we saw, have seen today in Rotherham, there was a particularly large gathering. And again, you know, for the British security services who might listen to this, 
I'm not excusing it and I'm not condoning it. I'm trying to understand how they've happened. But so like we saw today in Rotherham, uh, a very large gathering that uh, descended really kind of, it's, they besieged a Holiday Inn, a huge hotel in Rotherham and the right police had to prevent them from torching it to the ground, essentially. They tried, they set it on fire. So I can imagine that this has happened because there's been multiple incidents at that place and there's been multiple turnouts that, that in the past have been quelled by and haven't gone anywhere over the last like five years. And now in response to this stabbing that happened and the like the rising up in other areas, everybody's turned out because like they, they've done it before they've been there before it's not so unfamiliar to them but more people turned out and then they saw more people going and it all like it culminated in something that isn't so out of the ordinary in a way am i making any sense yes you no know, you make mm. uh, very very strong sense i, I suspect that mm. uh, i don't know 20 30 50 60 percent of the british public thinks that these rioters are patriots I don't think, in a way, I don't think anybody likes, No, <clears throat> nobody in the UK likes to see violence, okay, so, but while, <laughs> whilst they don't like it, I mean, in a way, you can understand, you, you can have the understanding, <laughs> you can have the understanding that in order for something to get done, a few eggs have to get broken. That's the only like idiom I can think of here, Luke, that kind of e explains it. And uh, it, one of the interesting things has been to see a lot of like the distant right, like academic agent and these people who effectively like on a low level, are effectively like every day of their life, like calling for some kind of revolution in the UK. You know, they deny it that that's what they're doing whilst, you know, seeking their own grift to grift on people's discontent. But really, this is like what they're doing. But like the, the first sign of it happening, they're like, oh, oh this is what I wanted. And, you're, and like my response to that is, well, of course it isn't. But how did you expect it to play out? I mean, if what you are doing is you are farming the in many ways, the legitimate discontentment of people, then how are you expecting it to play out? It's going to play out in a messy way when it happens. And it's not going to be, nobody's going to come to like academic agent and say, oh, I've heard, I've heard you know, your store, your streams on Evola. And would you like, you know, who we'd like you to take over now, sir, or anything like this. It's going to play out in a very messy way with like violent thugs who start breaking things. I mean, it was always going to end up like this. And lots of people, uh, people who get derided uh, for other other legitimate reasons, like, um, what's his name? Douglas... Um, Murray. Murray. It's people like him who have been warning, like, that thing, you know, we're, we're coming to a precipice here in the UK. And, you know, and, and it's going to get messy unless the government acknowledges that we're coming to these like precipice this precipice and and it's going to end up messy <laughs> that's all i can say no no uh, the 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 way society is organized right now mm. you cannot you you cannot if you've got anything to lose uh support you know anti-immigration without having your life ruined therefore mm. only people with nothing to lose are going to support anti-immigration therefore you can't expect them to have the same level of discipline that you would have if supporting anti-immigration was more socially acceptable so by ruling it out from the beginning that uh, supporting a substantial increase in in stopping immigration by, by ruling that out of polite society by definition yeah. you're only going to have impolite people pushing this agenda yeah uh, you ostracize the people and you create a, a large fraction of society who feel that they aren't being listened to. I mean, this is the, this is the, 
the isn't this the beauty luke of like liberal politics that it makes people feel that they are heard so and you, and and you sh it shouldn't come to this there should be this sense that people have representation and these kinds of events happen when communities boil up to the point where they feel utterly unrepresented that they're not heard and what's more they are oppressed in a way that's different to the, the the like the other class of people who who are being brought into the country and given welfare given benefits and police protections like what one of the stark <coughs> things i've told you that there's this feeling that there's a two-tier police system and there's this hashtag trending two two-tier care one of the things that the Labour government has done since coming in is that they've warned everybody effectively that they're going to put their taxes up. So they've, they've declared they found a £22 billion, billion pounds black hole in the budget. So they've, they've warned everybody in October they're going to basically be putting everybody's taxes up. And they've taken away from old people in the winter this, what is known as a winter fuel allowance. Basically, every old person in the country... Uh, usually gets, I think it's like three or four hundred pounds uh, directly into their bank accounts uh, some sometime around around Christmas because old people used to be afraid of putting on the heating in winter and would die. So they wouldn't pay for their heating. So now for years the government has been giving old people, well, let the Labour Party taking this away. So in the, in the couple of weeks of coming into office, they've announced that they're putting, basically putting your taxes up and they're taking winter fuel payments away from old people. But today they've announced uh, emergency funding that they are, have millions of pounds available to fund emergency security for mosques in the country. So this is only pouring fuel onto the fire of these people who already believe they already have these opinions. These are normie people. They're largely NPCs, you might call them, average person on the street who believe like that they are, are in poverty and the government doesn't care about them, that they're not represented in Parliament, that the government has forgotten about them, particularly in the North. There's always been the North-South divide that believe that like there's a different class of politician in, in Westminster who doesn't care about the North. Um, that they're unheard and and now that they're like giving favors to the foreigners who they're housing in hotels and like their their communities their high streets are being turned over to so high streets are being turned into like islamic centers uh literally and figuratively uh like churches are turning into mosques civic centers are being turned into like islamic centers and education centers where um, all they do is teach a little bit of English and how to get benefits. Hotels, again, have turned into, like, freely holding asylum seekers. There's all these issues that local people feel like they are really against the government. And, and the government has, all, has just said, we're not giving you your winter fuel money, but we do have the money to give to the mosques, so... Yeah, this is a fascinating story. I, I wonder how much X uh, plays a role here because X would not be nearly as wide open if Elon Musk didn't didn't buy it. Now you have you have a mm. considerable yeah. free speech on X, and my timeline is one hundred percent in favor of these, or at least sympathetic to the, the rioters, if not to the exact nature of everything they're doing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it does have a part. Now, to be, um, to be like absolutely, uh, kind of aware of what's going on. I mean, I mean, I think we also have to ask ourselves who, like, what am I trying to say? I'm also aware that when things like riots in the UK happen, okay, that foreign interests, for instance, probably have a, have an interest in stoking these things up that 
that okay. disrupting like the 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 good working order of the United Kingdom is also in the interests of foreign entities. For instance, groups I'm sure like in Russia or Iran or wherever China, I'm sure have an interest in destabilizing the UK. And so I'm fully aware that whilst like this stuff goes on, that it's being whipped up by accounts. Like, there's lots of misinformation that's gone around at the same time. Initially, perhaps, like, the riot, the, the, the discontent in the country was whipped up by potentially uh, some either Russian-backed or, I forget what it is, some foreign-linked accounts that were dropping a Muslim name out there. For three days, we didn't know who had slaughtered these girls. Okay, because the police wouldn't release the name, and... F- one of these accounts that's it's either Visegrad or something, one of them that's linked to some foreign state actor, initially put out a name that was a Muslim name. And so I'm aware that this goes on. Uh, uh, but so what I'm trying to say is this is like a, a problem with opening up something like X. And I'm aware that the government sees this issue and they're right about the problematic nature of this in in like an orderly society they look at this kind of thing and they say we can't have just like random like which are effectively foreign agents able to whip up a public public disorder through through the issuance of disinformation in moments of crisis um like probably just happened uh and and so there's an argument for something not being so open as x i'm aware that it's a benefit and and it's um and it's right. a problem right yeah, yeah. right it, it it is it is nice uh, for for those of us on on the right to be able to have a huge amount of free expression that's available on x with with all the downsides it's it's overwhelmingly i, I think a blessing because you see Examples mm. of reality that are gonna, you know, pierce through the the lies that are promoted by the media and by the elites. Yeah. That being said, I don't know how many normal people are even on X. To be honest, though, Luke, it really is. I, I mean, I don't think they like to admit it, but I think it used it really used to be the platform of the shit libs. Okay. Yes. Bad term, but it really was that they loved it. It was their platform and. All the, because all the right-wing discourse got removed from it, um, obviously it came back. But like the normie, it didn't really penetrate to the normie. The, the normie talks on Facebook. Um, the Zoomers are on Snapchat and TikTok. Not even YouTube, largely. Um, so I think it still remains, actually. X does remain detached. So you can think if you're on X... Like that, you have a real clear picture of discourse in the world, and you can think, "Wow, I follow a range of like um, moderate accounts here, and I'm wow, I'm getting this picture, you know, this unified picture. Therefore, I'm I'm seeing the truth." But you might not actually be. Um, you know, I don't think the normie normies on X yet. Right, but uh, it's the best place for following these riots. Mm. If they're important to you, X yeah. is the best place to be. Yes, it certainly is. Um, yeah, it's certainly the one for uh, seeing the truth of the news. Absolutely. Um, I mean, lots of the lots of the live streams are still done on or on TikTok or on YouTube, but X is where the news is. But you also get like these accounts. I think the the term that's going around from our slop accounts. You'll know that the ones that are slop accounts like end wokeness and uh, even even like libs of tiktok who are just invested in just post posting like discontentment propaganda um even if it even if it's true that what they're posting is true so nobody's saying that they're making right. it up right there's no sometimes. first yeah. amendment uh, protection in the united kingdom no there's not um, but that's not the point I'm making. I'm saying that there's these slop accounts who basically farm discontentment. And so whilst it may be true, it may not be an accurate picture as to exactly what's going on. I think that's, I think that's what oh, I'm definitely. The, the point is that uh, following the New York Times and the BBC is not necessarily an accurate oh, picture either. 
no, no, no. Yeah, you see, you see everything in real time. I think you have to be really careful about who you are following on X. Like I say, my feeds are probably um, a lot less reliable <laughs> than your feeds. Let's put it. Let's admit that much. I probably follow a lot of accounts who are less reliable sources and are more likely to feed me a diet of discontentment propaganda because that's like in their interest. Like when riots kick off. Um, their accounts that like want to tell me to get out on the streets and this kind of thing, versus people being moderate about the situation. And that and that is, yeah, that's a choice about who you follow. Yeah, but even it, I, I try to be pretty uh, use good judgment in who I follow. But even who I'm mm. following, virtually 100 uh, percent, express varying degrees of uh, sympathy and empathy for the rioters. Yeah, which. He, and this is, in, this is, again, why I say there's something going on. Uh, to use Nigel Farage's phrase from the election, something is going on out there. Something is happening out there. Because this is just in stark contrast to the government, who is absolutely, th like, they're thick-eared, and they're putting their fingers in their ears and going, la, 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 la. Um, you are bad people. You are s sick people. And we're going to crush you. So, yeah, we'll we'll have to see how this plays out. Anyway, Luke, I am okay. going to have to run. Yep. But um, yep. I'm glad to bring you up to speed. Thanks. Thanks for